Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming. My name is Solo and it's time to talk power level. The highest item power I have is 812 here on my two-handed sword. It seems like there's some sort of soft cap around 810 plus where it gets really hard to get a higher power level than this. But there's a way to overcome that because as you can see, items that are 840 and above do exist. And that's outrageously strong if, say, for a weapon where that can massively impact and improve your DPS. It's really hard to find these through normal means. But fortunately, as you can see, there's a consistent and fantastic way to farm even specific pieces of equipment where I'm getting a sword, a two-handed sword, perfect for me, over and over and over. And it's got nothing to do with, say, hell tides or otherwise. What I've got in my inventory here are all unique named rare items that came from a unique specific elite that spawn in specific places places on the map all across the world. So every time you go to said location and the elite's there, you kill it, it's always going to drop the same thing. And you can see whether it's active and there when you're going near it on your mini map or on your map as a flashing icon. This tells you, hey, the elite's up and it's very close. There are four elites in every region, leading to a total of 20 unique elite locations, though technically there's more than 20 elites to kill since in a few fights you have to defeat multiple enemies for the one drop. Like anything though, these drops are going to scale higher and higher the further you're up in the world tiers. So once you're in torment mode, like any item, it can have the potential to drop as an ancestral. And then it can can have a chance to roll higher and higher on the power level. Before I get into the details of this though, I just want to credit the original source of this information to my knowledge, Swanovan, who created a detailed post about this a couple days ago on Reddit. He showcased some of those 840 roughly power level items that I just showed, so I want to thank him for making the community aware of this. Now to the important details then. There are downsides to this. The elites drop specific loot. That's great for farming, but it's also meaning that if you were to go kill the mob that drops the sorcerer staff, it's always going to drop that staff. Me as a necromancer, that just has no use. But it does mean there's a relevant weapon drop for your class that you can go farm that elite whenever possible and hopefully get a high roll. But before you imagine yourself going to say 15 of the 20 elites to go farm all the different pieces like a high roll chess piece, unfortunately there's another aspect to this you need to be aware of. As you can see, these items only have three stats on them. But let's say this infernal edge actually rolled say 830, 840. Well that's 30 levels higher than my current weapon. Even if it only had three skills on it, it would be worth upgrading to and replacing my weapon. I can still imprint on it like normal, and you can still re-roll the skills, so four perfect stats on an 810 weapon is much worse than an 840 weapon with three perfect stats. There's another interesting detail about these items. As you can see, they sell for insanely cheap. They're really not worth selling or farming for money purposes. But that's actually a positive thing when we're trying to get the perfect item, because when you re-roll the stats for enchanting, you can see how it costs next Next to no gold. This can cost hundreds of thousands or even millions when you're re-rolling multiple times. To say that it's so cheap to re-roll, this is honestly incredible. And there's another benefit to killing these elites. They're commonly dropping monster parts and like chunks of them, like three or four, which is awesome. Monster parts are things like demon hearts, pale tongue, grave dusk, or the all important crushed beast bone, that dreaded monster part we all had to farm for an early potion upgrade. Going and hunting down all 20 locations and all the elites will give you a like an achievement and of course it will give you a pile of those monster parts so it could be worth doing that or farming a specific one if there's any monster part you need when it comes to their spawn rates it's shockingly often sometimes i stand there for a few moments and it just spawns again while sometimes it's less kind some require environment interaction before it'll spawn a repeated conversation until eventually it turns into the elite i would recommend trying this as often as you can every time you have a free moment just a minute or two go see if it's there and go get the drop you can camp one individual individual spawn though, killing it and waiting for it to spawn again. But the spawn times seem to really vary. Like I said, sometimes it took just 10 seconds, sometimes a couple minutes, sometimes 5 or 10 minutes, or even longer. And since it's so inconsistent, I wouldn't really recommend standing there for 20 minutes. I would just do it until it's not spawning quickly, and then come back another time. I will say that out of the 20 locations, about 17 of them were just there when I went there, so there's no problem with that. But there was one thing that caused issues when I was there during a hell tide. It seemed to make things a bit awkward. But other than that, they should always be there or have the chance to be there. One extra detail I'm seeing in the community in regards to that is if you one-shot them, they sometimes won't drop the item, which is weird because they're meant to literally always drop the item. I've never seen that and I've found like 40 items total so far. But if you are afraid of that, people are claiming, potentially placebo, that if you hit them slowly with auto attack so they don't die instantly, then kill them, it makes it drop. But again, I've had no issues with this. If you are farming a specific elite though and you don't want to just stand there waiting, there is
is potential that when you relog, this actually sort of gives you a refresh, another chance for him to just be standing there immediately. To do that, you just leave the game and load straight back in. But now it's time for the big important part. Where are all of the 20 locations? And what does each elite drop? Again, there's four locations in each region. We'll start with the bottom right here. Next to this waypoint at the southern point of the map, just to the east of that, right here on this corner, is an elite. This is Captain Wilcox, and he drops boots. Also quite near to this location is another elite as we go west over here into this corner and onto this little plateau as you climb up to it. The trembling mass here will always drop a ring. If we head north from that point to this waypoint here and then we head northwest to this corner here, another elite will spawn. This is Ren Dane and then the ghost that spawns after that which will drop a crossbow for rogues. To the east from there, just southwest of the Tree of Whisperers, is another elite spawn here, the last one in this region. This is Enkil, and it always drops an amulet. Let's head west to the next region at the southwestern point of all of the map, Gearcall City. You can head out of there to the east to this location here, next to an altar of Lilith, and you can kill an elite that always drops a focus. In the same area, just northwest of the city, we can come up to this plateau here, just next to this location, and there'll be a big scorpion. This one always drops a one-handed dagger. Heading north from there, just to the west of the altar of Ruin Waypoint, we have another Elite. This one's a Ghost. This one always drops a Wand. Then as we head east from there down to this location, this is quite near to the Imperial Library Waypoint, you can kill an Elite here that always drops a Ring. That's all of the four Elites in that region, so let's head north to the Dry Steps. Northwest of the Alzador Waypoint then, we have this kind of beach that's barren and dark. And roughly on this Waypoint, you'll find a Demon that always drops a Two-Handed Sword, which is the one that I'm farming. Far to the southeast of that location then, next to the Jirandai Waypoint. Just east of that, as you head to this bump on the map on this corner here, you can find another Elite. This one always drops a Helmet. To the north from there, we go to the Onyx Watchtower. And from the southwest of there, in this exact location, you'll find another Elite. This one always drops a Necklace. Then to the east of the region, all the way over here, next to the Hidden Overlook Waypoint, heading to the east right here you'll find an elite that always drops a chess piece. And that brings us to our next region, the Fractured Peaks. On the northwestern side of that, we have Menestat at the waypoint, and just to the west of that on this bump is another elite. This one always drops a ring. Also quite near to the Menestat waypoint, just to the east, is this exact location next to this dungeon. So Lina here will always drop a one-handed sword. Heading south from that location, we have this waypoint here of Nostrava, and just south of that is this little area here. And Raphrael Oscar Reed here will always drop a mace. Over to the northeastern section of this map, we have the Bear Tribe waypoint, and just northeast as you head out there in this area here on the plateau, you'll find Colin Hull, who will always drop, hey, that sorcerer staff we mentioned earlier. This brings us to the northern region and the final region. On the southeastern point of this area, we have the Under the Fat Goose Inn, and if we head all the way east over here to this corner here, you'll find an elite. The hay drops five beast bones, which is nice, and he will always drop gloves. Just northwest of that location is the Timar waypoint, and if we head north east into this red area here in this exact spot the southern western point of this red area we'll find another elite that drops an amulet then west of that we have the main city of seragar heading just out of that to the southeast to this sort of field section here we have an elite that always drops legs finally the last elite on this list to the west next to this waypoint or this one head into the deep forest and at the sort of bottom corner right in the middle there is our last elite which always drops a ring with that covered then you now know the locations of all 20 and you know which weapon you should go farm of course in my case i want a two-handed sword so i've been hunting down the infernal edge it should also be noted that these items all drop with the same stats on them so infernal edge is a all stats damage to injured enemies and up to a percent chance to execute injured non-elites so on all the ones that i've rolled it's those same stats just with different numbers like the higher the item power the more all stats you'll get. This is still worth if it's a significant item power increase, as I've been saying. That covers the topic as a whole, though. I hope this has been useful to you. I'd like to say again, thank you to Swanovan on Reddit for highlighting this. So go upvote his post if you can. Until next time, though, I've been Hollow. You've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye